My name is Deacon Jim, and this is St. Bernadette in South Los Angeles. Today is Thursday, April 8th, and we are in Thursday of the Octave of Easter. So let us begin as we always begin in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all and with your spirit. My sisters and brothers, as we begin our celebration, let us praise our merciful God. Lord Jesus, you came to seek out those who were lost. Lord, have mercy. You came to give your life for the sake of all. Christ, have mercy. You came to gather into one family your scattered children. Lord, have mercy. And let us pray. O God, who have united the many nations in confessing your name, grant that those reborn in the font of baptism may be one in the faith of their hearts and the homage of their deeds. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. And let us come together as we break open the Scripture. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. As the crippled man who had been cured clung to Peter and John, all the people hurried in amazement toward them in the portico called Solomon's Portico. When Peter saw this, he addressed the people. You children of Israel, why are you amazed at this? And why do you look so intently at us, as if we had made him walk by our own power or piety? The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, the God of our fathers, has glorified his servant Jesus, whom you handed over and denied in Pilate's presence when he had decided to release him. You denied the holy and the righteous one and asked that a murderer be released to you instead. The author of life you put to death. But God raised him from the dead of this we are witnesses, and by faith in his name, this man whom you see and know, his name has made strong, and the faith that comes through it has given him the perfect help in the presence of all of you. Now, I know, brothers and sisters, that you acted out of ignorance, just as your leaders did, but God has thus brought to fulfillment what he had announced beforehand through the mouth of all the prophets, that this Christ would suffer. Repent, therefore, and be converted, that your sins may be wiped away, and that the Lord may grant you times of refreshment and send you the Christ already appointed for you, Jesus, whom heaven must receive until the times of universal restoration, of which God spoke through the mouth of his holy prophets from of old. For Moses said, A prophet like me will the Lord your God raise up for you from among your own kin. To him you shall listen in all that he may say to you. Everyone who does not listen to that prophet will be cut off from the people. Moreover, all the prophets who speak from Samuel and those afterwards also announce these days. You are the children of the prophets and of the covenant that God made with your ancestors. When he said to Abraham, in your offspring, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. For you first, God raised up his servant and set him to bless you by turning each of you from your evil ways. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our responsorial Psalm, O Lord our God, how wonderful your name in all the earth. O Lord our God, how glorious is your name over all the earth. What is man that you should be mindful of him, or the son of man that you should care for him? O Lord our God, how wonderful your name in all the earth. You have made him little less than the angels and crowned him with glory and honor. You have given him rule over the works of your hands putting all things under his feet. O Lord our God, how wonderful your name in all the earth. All sheep and oxen, yes, and the beasts of the field, the birds of the air, the fishes of the sea, and whatever swims the paths of the seas. O Lord our God, how wonderful your name in all the earth. 
Christians to the Paschal victim, offer your thankful praises. A lamb the sheep redeems, Christ who only is sinless, reconciles sinners to the Father. Death and life have contended in that combat stupendous. The Prince of Life who died reigns immortal. Speak, Mary, declaring what you saw wayfaring, the tomb of Christ who is living, the glory of Jesus' resurrection, bright angels attesting, the shroud and napkin resting. Yes, Christ, my hope is arisen, to Galilee he goes before you. Christ indeed from death is risen, for our new life obtaining, have mercy, victor, king, ever reigning. Amen. Alleluia. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us be glad and rejoice in it. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you, with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you. O oh Lord. The disciples of Jesus recounted what had taken place along the way and how they had come to recognize him in the breaking of the bread. And while they were still speaking about this, he stood in their midst and said to them, Peace be with you. But they were startled and terrified and thought they were seeing a ghost. Then he said to them, Why are you troubled? And why do questions arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet that it is I myself. Touch me and see, because a ghost does not have flesh and bones, as you can see that I have. And as he said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. While they were still incredulous for joy and were amazed, he asked them, have you anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of baked fish. He took it and ate it in front of them. He said to them, these are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses and in the prophets and Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to the understand the scriptures. And he said to them, thus it is written that the Christ must suffer and rise from the dead on the third day and that repentance for the forgiveness of sins would be preached in his name to all the nations beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Isn't it great to be reading stuff after Easter and getting to hear the rest of the story rather than just kind of, you know, we go Easter Sunday and then we kind of just lay back. But as we go through this week, we continue to hear this ongoing story of Jesus. So. When, there's a story when Peter heals a crippled man just outside the temple. There's a crowd that quickly gathers. And, and Peter's response is interesting because, however, he expresses not, not oh yeah, I did a great job, or, or yeah, you should be impressed. He, he actually is frustrated with the fact that they're amazed. He says, after all, it was not by his own power that the man was cured, but by the power of God, the power of God of Abraham, the power of God of Isaac, and the power of Jacob, the God of Jacob, the God of the fathers. The how, how, that great song, God of our fathers, resting still. Peter quickly delves into the accusatory rhetoric containing the message from his Pentecost sermon. While many Christians have inter interpreted Peter's inflammatory language as a reason to condemn the Jewish people, we have to pause and we have to be careful. There is no place where the disciples suggest that the Jewish people should be persecuted. And later on in history, this happens, and they blame it on them for being the Christ killers. But that's not what's intended here. You know, he, that's not what he intends. We have to pause and understand where is Peter coming from? He just lost a dear friend, not to a disease, not to an accident, but to a political execution that enjoyed popular support. I mean, everybody pretty much supported the execution of Jesus when it happened. So Peter quite understandably wants to scream at the top of his lungs, how ridiculous you are. You denied 
the holy and the righteous one, and you ask that a murderer be released to you. Stupid. I mean, that's basically what he's saying. Stupid. The author of life you put to death. Surely we can point out to our own inconsistencies as, you know, we, we deny sometimes, do we not? We care for some by, you know, while celebrating for some and we don't care for others. And we do the same thing. We do this, this kind of personalizing thing. So rather than pointing a finger at the Jews then, this text today, and it's really important to get this, points a finger at us. Uh-huh. It points a finger at us. It is our sins that have to be wiped away, not theirs. We're not, it's not talking about their sins that have to be wiped away, but ours. We must be converted. Even if they don't, they aren't converted, we must be. It is our sins that must be wiped away. The good news, however, is that the author of life, whom we put to death, because we're one of the crowd, we're not one of the disciples yet, he's been raised. And as Peter proclaims, by faith in his name, Jesus gives healing and wholeness to us all. And isn't that the message of Easter? That we all receive the healing and wholeness of Jesus Christ. We have opened our hearts and minds to the wisdom of God and the liturgy of the word. Now let us turn to him humbly and sincerely with these common petitions. For our Holy Father, Pope Francis, for our Archbishop, Jose, and for all the pastors, priests, and deacons of the Archdiocese of Los Angeles, that they be blessed with the zeal and courage to proclaim the values and the obligations of our holy religion. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our civil leaders and representatives on the national and local levels, that their laws and their lives be an inspiration to all citizens by reflecting right reason and divine revelation. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our youth in particular, that they be given the encouragement and the guidance they need to resist the immoral and sinful presence of our current pagan culture. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for those who risk their lives while fighting for fundamental rights under dictatorships, authoritarian regimes, and sometimes even in democracies in crisis. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick, the needy, the aged, and the lonely, that they be consoled spiritually by the gifts of grace and also receive care, aid, and loving concern from relatives, friends, and neighbors. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died recently, that they may speedily attain the blessedness of heaven. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for our own personal intentions. God of mercy and compassion, bless us by granting these common petitions. For we plead to you in the name of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And let us pray together the prayer our Lord Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, and deliver us from every evil, and grant us peace. In our day. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Hear, O Lord, our prayers, that this most holy exchange by which you have redeemed us may bring your help in this present life and ensure for us eternal gladness. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. And the Lord be with you and with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. My brothers and sisters, go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your lives. And may you go in Easter peace. Amen. Today's Thursday. Tomorrow's Friday. I'll see you tomorrow. God bless.